Okay, very fundamental concept. What is NPV, net present value? Now, you people have uh, calculated NPV in past in financial management, net present value. And you say that net present value is if in project appraisal, investment appraisal, if any project has a net present value of, I mean, a positive net present value, we are going to approve the project. Now, the question is that if I tell you that any particular project, it has a net PV, a NPV, if the NPV of that particular project is, say, 500,000, what should I do? You say, we should approve the project. We should do the project for 500,000, okay? Um, now, my question is that, what is this 500,000? Is it the profit from that project? Answer is no, it is not profit. Uh, then we say that, is it the cash from the project? Answer is it is not cash. So how do you explain what is this 500,000? It is actually dollars. So this is half a million dollar. And you have discounted it at the discount rate of say 10%. So you discounted your project cash flows at 10% and you get $500,000 positive NPV. You say, I'm going to do the project, accept it. The question is, what is 500,000 itself? Is it profit? No. Is it cash flow? No. Um, what is it then? Now, before I answer what is it, you remember from your past knowledge that if you increase the discount rate from 10% to 12%, NPV is supposed to go down. Maybe NPV will become 250,000. If you increase it to 14%, maybe NPV become, I don't know, 50,000. And if you make it 16%, maybe now the project gets a negative NPV of 100,000. So it can't be profit or it can't be cash flow because it is the same project with all the same revenues, all the same variable cost, all the same fixed cost, all the same cash flows, everything is same. You are just changing the discount rate and NPV is changing. It's the same project. Because now what is NPV? That was my actual original question, remember. NPV is not something an absolute value. NPV is not an absolute value. When I say that NPV is 500, you ask me that, at what discount rate? The answer is that discount rate is 10%. So at 10%, if you get 500,000 NPV, it tells you that this particular project is going to give you $500,000 more, $500,000 more than if you had invested the amount at 10%, which means that if you invest your money in some other opportunity which is giving you 10%, this project is going to give you 500,000 more than 10%. So if the return, if you put the money in the bank or some other project, some other project, which is giving you X dollars, then this project actually is giving you X plus 500,000. So this is a relative amount. It is not an absolute amount. When I say 500,000 NPV, it means that it is giving me a return which is $500,000 more as compared to 10%. So now the question is that if is this project if I have a go if I have only 10% thing so I ask is this project giving $500,000 you said no it is not giving 500,000 it is giving 500,000 over and above 10%. And that is the reason because when you said that let's suppose that if NPV becomes 0 at 14 if at 14%, if NPV becomes zero, so does that mean that this project is not giving any return? No, the project is same. It still has got revenues, profits, cash flows, everything. So then why is NPV zero and what does that mean? It means that this project is going to give you 14% return. It is not going to give you anything more or less. So at when it was 250,000, it means that if you invest in this project, if you discount the cash flows at 12%, then this project is giving 250,000 more than what a 12% project could have given you. And that's why we say, let's invest here. It is giving me 250,000 more. And when I put it zero, I say that the project is giving me the return, which is equal to 14% return. I could have invested money somewhere 
at 14% and this project is giving me the same return. And when it becomes negative, we say that do not invest in this project because you said that my discount rate is 16% because I've got some opportunity at 16%. So this particular project is going to give you $100,000 less than the 16% investment. So we say, let's reject this project, go and invest somewhere else where you get 16%. So I ask you, you are taking your money here, how much return do you need? You say that I need 12% return. I ask you, how much return do you need? You say, I need 12%. I say, invest in this project. It is going to give you 250,000 more than 12%. Then you come in, I say, how much return do you need? And the other guy says, I need 16% return. I say, don't invest in this project because this project is not going to give you 16%. It in fact is going to give $100,000 less than any other project at 16%, okay? This is one thing. And this is the concept of NPV. And we said, what is IRR? What was IRR? This is where you have the IRR. IRR is that point where NPV becomes zero. IRR is that point, that rate of return. So for this, pro for this project, 14% is IRR. IRR is where NPV becomes zero. And IRR is actually the real rate of return. Because in case of NPV, when you were trying to explain me, or maybe I was trying to explain you, we were finding it difficult to explain NPV. You, got, you know, that NPV is something that if you invest in this project, it is going to give you $500,000 more than what you have got at 10%, a difficult explanation. And how did you get 500,000? Oh, I discounted the cash flows. What is the discount rate? That was whack and so on. So we come up with IRR. IRR is actually the real rate of return. So when I say that the IRR is the point where NPV becomes zero, so it means that this particular project is actually giving you the same return what a 14% project could have given you. So 14% is the real rate of return from this project. So IRR is actually the real the real return of, of any project. So if, if, if I ask you that what is this project giving, you say 40, its IRR is 14%. So it means that this project is giving me 14%, okay? So IRR is your real rate of return. I mean, it's internal rate of return, but for me, it's the real thing. Okay, then we need to discuss... Okay, you know, somebody asked, uh, answered this thing that NPV is the share increase in shareholder wealth. Yeah, but that's a little bit of subjective explanation. Uh, assumptions in NPV. See, calculation of NPV will always be very easy. The most important thing in NPV is about the assumptions which you will make. Okay. Okay. Um, Calculation is the standard table. You can do it in Excel. In real life, you actually in exam, you don't use the formulas, but in real life, we use the formulas. What is more important in NPV calculation is the assumptions which we make uh, for these numbers. For example, revenues, we say, okay, revenues will grow by 5%. How do you know? And this is actually going to come as part of your discussion question in exam. Uh, a lot of NPV questions, they are accompanied with some kind of discussion. And one very common discussion question is about the assumptions in NPV. Because we forecast some cash flows. We said that our revenues will grow by 5%. So you assume that revenues will grow by 5%. What if they don't grow by 5%? Then you said variable cost will grow by 3%. Maybe they grow by more. Then you said that fixed cost will grow by 2%. How do you know? Maybe there will be a change. Then you assume that your discount rates will remain same. Then you assume that your initial investment in the project is 50 million. Maybe you will outrun your budget. You assume that you will have, you know, end of the year, um, end of the period, you will have some residual value of the equipment, $5 million. Maybe it is not $5 million because you assume that after five years, my equipment had will have a residual value of five million. Maybe it will have two million. So all these assumptions, because you put all these numbers in your cash flows, and then you assume that tax rate is 20%, maybe the government will increase the tax rate, 25%. 
you discounted this cash flows with weighted average cost of capital WAC. WAC, it included your cost of equity and your cost of debt. And the calculation of cost of equity and debt, it did have um, you know, some input from the market interest rates. If the market interest rates will change, your discount factor will change. Your discount factor will change, your present value of cash flows will change. So you, when you calculate, you come up and you said, you know, my NPV is $5 million, let's go and do the project. The thing is that we first we say, okay, it's 5 million, it looks good, but let's sit down and see what assumptions did you make and how realistic those assumptions are. Because a lot of times, I mean, I can change NPV calculations like this. I can just say, oh, inflation is not 6%, it is 8%, everything will be changed. Revenue growth is not 5%, it is 6%, or it is 4%. Everything can change. So I need to see that how much logical those assumptions are. And if these assumptions will not hold true in future, then your project might run into losses. Okay? So assumptions in NPV is a discussion. Usually we make say that we have an assumption about uh, you know, growth in revenue, growth in uh, inflation or growth in variable cost, fixed cost, uh, assumption about the initial investment, assumption about the residual value, assumption about the interest rate, assumption about the tax rates. Seven assumptions, maybe few more as well, depending on the conditions. So assumptions you should, and this assumption part is actually the question is, um, you remember I told you that go and download that document which includes 30 theory questions. This is uh, in one of um, this is one of the question among those 30. So go and read it in detail uh, because it is a very much possible question which they can ask an exam. Anything you want to ask until here?